that's been first thing in the morning, people will uh, trickle in, but uh, let me make my introductory remarks. So let me first begin by um, uh, thanking a few people for making the whole thing possible. Uh, thank you to you, the audience and participants, for allowing yourselves to be roped in. But my first thanks are due to Chris Mooney, who is, I'm sure, uh, better known to many of you in this audience than anyone else in the room. But I wanted to say a couple of words about why I owe special thanks to Chris, quite apart from everything else. Uh, academics are kind of used to people who say no all the time. Uh, things need to be reflected upon, and you need to uh, you know, find appropriate amounts of time to think through what you're doing, and so on and so forth. It's not a very can-do world in academia. Uh, so it was an absolute delight to work with Chris. Uh, we drew this program together in a huge hurry by academic conference standards. Uh, it was possible because Chris himself is a blogger and a Twitterer and everything else under the sun. Uh, but above all, my pleasure came from the fact that he never said no, and even when I thought things were not going to work out, you know, I would get little, you know, 150 character messages saying that don't worry, all will be well, and sure enough, all did become well. So Chris, thanks very much for helping to pull the, this together and making it happen. Uh, I also want to thank my assistant, Shana Rabinovich, for uh, all of the other sort of invisible logistics of making things come into being. I want to thank Alex Wellesley, who's sitting in the back there, because I've learned uh, through long experience that programs don't happen unless you make them visible. I don't know how to make them visible, I just know that one should. Alex has the imagination to make things visible in dramatic and eye-catching ways, and he is the designer of this poster and of most of the public presence of the STS program. Um, and then I also want to thank my fellows, and in particular the ones who will be chairing panels throughout the day, and they are Sam Evans, Ben Hulbert, and Ellen Bales, and you'll see them and meet them as we go forward. Um, so, I think the best thing for me to do is just see what's on the screen here. Um, so, I want to begin by saying a few words about, um, yeah, well, I don't know why the logo of our program is not appearing, Alex. It's a Mac interface issue, um, but what is the, what is the STS program and, and why are we doing this? Uh, the STS program at the Kennedy School uh, begins in the field of science and technology studies, which is a deep exploration of the nature of science and technology as social institutions, and then starting from that exploration of what are science and technology, how do they work, and so on and so forth, we address issues that connect science, technology, and society. So uh, we uh, firmly believe as an academic enterprise that you can't understand the links between science and society without first uh, immersing yourself in the study of science and technology as themselves thick, rich institutions with their own dynamics and with their own characteristics uh, that we need to know about in greater detail. So, about the topic of, of today's discussion, first of all, uh, something about speed and the surface quality of information and the fact that both speed and superficiality have a particular grip on masses, that idea has been with us for centuries. Uh, it used to be called rumor, today it's called blogging. Uh, <laughs> in Henry IV of Shakespeare, there actually is a character named Rumor who appears on the stage and says a variety of things. But you will see that uh, you know the, the flute of rumor, the pipe of rumor, is so easy to play with or to play upon that the blunt monster with uncounted heads the still discordant, wavering multitude can play upon it. So there you see blogging and democracy you know, put together hundreds of years before our own time. And the next quotation is from an English satirist, Alexander Pope, also talking about rumors. And, and there you see the quality of uh, non-validation that he's talking about. Scarce any tale was sooner heard than told, 
all who told it added something new. You know, this is the children's game of whisper, where you whisper something into one ear, and then the person, you know, repeats it to the to the neighbor sitting next to them, and the story gets changed in the process. And all who heard it made enlargements too. Uh, so you see this this preoccupation that is the subject of today's workshop. Uh, is not new. It's it's something that people have worried about, and connecting something about the surfaceness of information as it travels with multitudes, masses, democracy. That has been with us for a long time. Nevertheless, technology obviously makes a difference, and people have been thinking about rumor in its relation to technology, and what is it going to do for us. Uh, so, um, an MIT-based analyst of the media age several decades ago uh, wrote this book, Technologies of Freedom. The author was Ithil de Sola Pool. Um, and there was a great deal of promise assumed with uh, information technologies at the, at the dawn of that era. I know that Chris is going to come back to this theme in more detail, but it's interesting to contrast what a recent book on the same topic looks like as opposed to uh, the solar pool. So it's no longer about freedom, it's about falsehoods and about lying. 